Papa Angelo Marinacci Jr. here. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, me and my uh, wingman, the amazing Mark Mark Rush. We did a nice uh, uh, presentation yesterday at the uh, Bristol, Rhode Island uh, State Street Art Fest. Very cool. Annual. I've done it before. Nice gathering. People all smiling, having a good time. Uh, low energy, high enjoyment. A little breezy, a little cloudy, but everything went well. Mark found his way there. He hadn't played there before. I'm not uh, here to speak to you today about my music. I'm a musical unknown. I'm always proud to say that. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing it most of my life in different ways. For the last 12 years, I've been on YouTube. I've got a lot of music posted here. Some of you know that, some of you don't know that, some of you don't care to know that. That's okay, that's all cool. I'm here to talk about other things online uh, pertaining to music. You know, people can be educated and they can be learned. They're not necessarily the same thing. I'm really tired of these weird put downs like, oh, if you have an education that doesn't give you common sense. Well, being uneducated or without an education, or without the benefit of an education, doesn't mean you're automatically given common sense either. And neither of those viewpoints are neither here nor there. Uh, the point is, some people learn differently from uh, different experiences or uh, opportunities, if you will. When I first came to music, which is a long time ago, only uh, kids that were uh, fortunate enough got to have lessons and buy a guitar and whatnot. A lot of us didn't have anything. You'd borrow an instrument or you'd save up a little bit of money, buy a piece of junk and try to learn music that was acceptable for your friends or you could play together. Now, all that's ancient history. It's all been replaced. The idea of tuning a guitar with a tuning fork or something to blow in or a good ear or a piano. It's all been replaced. In fact, almost everything we thought we knew about music in one way or another may have been replaced. We're living in an age of information and sources of information. There's endless sources of information. Uh, there's endless historical perspective, uh, which often clash. There's different tastes. There's different experiences that people have of whether they like things or they don't like things. I try to stay very open uh, in the realm of music. I hate when people my age say, ah, the music today, you kids, they don't know. That's all craziness, man. Uh, the only thing wrong with the music today, and this has always been the case all through the ages, is the music today is for the people today. And it sometime will exclude, or often excludes, the previous generations. And they resent that. They have their music and they think that's the best music. I'm not here to talk about that. I don't really care what you listen to. Uh, I hope you're listening to something. Music is such a great thing to have in your life. If you play, it's a great thing. If you support someone who plays, if you listen to music, whatever. But I really have a hard time imagining a life that doesn't contain music. And along with music, there's lots of attitudes about music, about what it feels like personally, how it enhances your life what you'd expect to hear if you went into a quiet place for a cup of coffee or if you went into a loud bar. All those things have variation to them. I try to put things in perspective as best I can. I'm only one human. I have one point of view, like everybody else. POV, or point of view, as we talk about. That's all we're limited to. And we base so much of what we do on our experiences or if we can gain from other people's experiences, which is sometimes difficult. Sometimes people really have a hard time shutting off their brain a little bit, opening the door and letting other, other people's viewpoints in. Or they find a limited point of focus and they take all their information from one f form or one source. We live in the age of information, you know that. In fact, uh, it's created so many great things and so many chaotic bad things because it's hard to tell what is utter nonsense or what's really good information. So I'm here to speak on behalf of someone who I do not know, I've never met, but uh, like many people, I will travel on uh, YouTube quite a bit 
and I check out all the other music sites as best I can. I'm mostly concerned with my own music. That's not selfish. Uh, I, I try to write uh, as often as I can. I've got a lot of music posted here. Again, some of you know that. Some of you really don't care to know that. That's okay. Um, but I try to stay open, and I try to see where good sources are. What I really like is when I stumble upon someone who I personally do not know very much about. In this particular case, I'm going to talk about uh, Rick Beto. I believe the name is pronounced Beto. I don't believe it's pronounced Beto. Um, because I've watched uh, a number of his videos. And I have some things I would like to share. Uh, observations. Uh, in terms of my critiquing Rick Beto. Now, I hope that I, I don't get hate mail from Rick Beto or Rick Beto followers or something. That's not my purpose. My purpose is not to incite anyone. It's actually uh, to spread something which I think is worthy of spreading. If, if I go to a dentist and I'm very happy about the service, I'll let it be known. I'll post that somewhere uh, because people are really quick to post negative information, warning, oh, I was unhappy with the waitress, I'll never go there as long as I live, I left her three cents for a tip. People like those comments. They don't often take the time to spread good news. I don't mean that in a religious fashion at all, uh, uh, though some people might be affected that way. I have no heroes in my life. My father was a hero to me. Uh, he wasn't an easy man uh, to know or understand, but he was a challenging man to experience, and he brought such a wealth of uh, uh, experiences, expertise, insight. He brought that into my life and made me very curious about lots and lots of things. Um, he had interesting ways of looking at the world. He said, before you touch something, before you work on it, whether it's a building, a guitar, a tomato plant, your automobile, stare at it for a while and quite often that thing will tell you what you really need to know. Don't just tackle it. Look at it, study it, think it through. Maybe the next day, even better, the answers will come to you. Say, do this, 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 and this, or try these different things in this order. Now, that's uh, found its way into many aspects of my life, doing what I just mentioned. That's free advice. You don't have to take it. Nothing I'm saying is all that important right now. Uh, Rick Beto, he has a, uh, a diverse experience in music, which would be hard to challenge. And I'm talking about recording, writing, performing, dealing with people. This is where I come into the picture. I watched this guy. I watched this guy interview a wide variety of people. I watch this guy talk about instruments. I watch this guy share information with, with people. This one guy, Rick Beto, the only reason for me making this video. And it dawned on me today, I said, you know, this guy handles himself so well. I mean, really well. He's a natural born teacher in the true sense. He keeps a nice modesty about himself. He never comes across as being arrogant about things that he really knows a lot about. Things that his experiences are the kinds of life experiences. There are young people out there who would give anything to be able to say, I did that too, or I had a chance to do that. Rick Beto is this vast intellectual, spiritual creature that has found a way to take something so elaborate and so important in our lives and give it to us in a way, in a form, through mass media, this, this thing that you're looking at right now. Offer it to us in a refreshing, delightful way. I would encourage anyone, I don't care if you're, you just bought a guitar, if you're thinking about whistling to yourself, if you're writing music, if you've been playing a long time, this guy's handling of interviews is first-rate journalism, in my opinion. His way of getting the gold for his viewers, absolutely wonderful. 
He has a curious mind, a delightful manner about himself. He's always presentable. He always sounds like a guy who's about to invite you to a birthday party. That's how he sounds. He includes aspects of his own life. He sits in a setting that, again, most musicians would just give anything to be able to have. It's filled with instruments, atmosphere, recording things. He brought you into the intimacy of all of his experiences in this one room, this chamber, his inner sanctum. And his inner sanctum, not only in terms of its architecture and the articles that are in it, but the way he presents himself. It's like saying he's opening the front door and letting the world walk in and sit down and carefully listen. He's always enjoyable. He's a pleasure to discover or a pleasure to partake in. I would encourage anyone to dial this guy in. See what he has to offer. I'm talking about master guitar lessons because he covers everything. He's very genuinely youthful. He covers everything in, a, in a, a fresh, delightful way. He doesn't make you feel left out of the discussion. You feel like you're in the discussion with him. When he's interviewing people, no matter who he's interviewing, I've watched about 20 interviews already. They've all been a, a, an absolute joy. I've learned a lot, even about things that I was sure I knew a great deal about. Um, I watch his articulation to deliver points that are worthy of a master musician or an opening beginning student. And never does he do it in any way that would leave you excluded. Uh, he includes everyone in a natural manner. Uh, he's got a real gift for delivery. Um, he's been around a while. I don't think he's my age. I think I'm a little older than he is, possibly. But he certainly is as they say, nonetheless, for wear. He looks terrific, has a good voice, a delightful smile always glued onto his face. His voice is uh, it's, it's broadcast worthy. He should have radio shows, television shows. That's how cool I think this guy is. The word is cool. We use that word from the beat generation. That's how far I go back. We use this to really explain things that were splendid. Very, very. Now it's used all over the place. All words are used all over the place. Um, words are beginning to lose meaning. Even the worst of words have begun to lose meaning. Um, that's what too much information is done. We've democratized everything we can know in a way that makes it very hard to know when you should be paying attention or when you should maybe change the station. My point is, this guy, Rick Beto, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, I'm assuming it, he's really worth listening to. I would think almost any musician alive would get something from this guy. And if you're like, not in a major league, you're in the minors, or you're trying to break into the minors, or you're a novice, you'll find him delightful because he's always pleasant to listen to. There's no whining. There's no complaining. Not, nobody gets insulted. There's no breaking anything. It's really a stream of genuine consciousness on the topic at hand. I, I watched him uh, interview, uh, or I've watched him interview people who've been around in the music industry forever and have done things that you don't know about, that you want to know about. And I've watched him interview young and upcomers, uh, uh, Matthias uh, uh, Mancuso, for example. And he took great delight in having uh, Mancuso along with another, and at the moment I forget the gentleman's name, another real top-line guitarist interviewing the back and forth and letting them exchange views and ideas. It was wonderful. It's something that most people would, would uh, stop dead in their tracks and say, let me go catch these guys. They're on right now. So, I'm saying with an open heart, I have nothing to gain from this. Uh, this is a free video to you that I'm doing. And I'm only saying that I've been watching this guy. And I think this guy has really got it together. And in a world of chaos and disorder and bedlam and insults and screaming and all that that's going on around us, this guy is a real safe haven. 
You don't need a special card to get in. You don't have to say you graduated from some special school or that you follow a certain musician and you only assign yourself to a certain style of playing. This guy really hits a lot of a lot of bases uh, with his presentation. So again, I would encourage you, no matter who you are, um, like myself, I'm a mu musical nobody, a musical no one. I'm very happy with that. I get to do my thing. I get to present my music. I find audiences, and uh, I feel good about that. That's what everybody's looking for, find their audience. Um, this guy might be helpful. Give a listen. He'll talk to you about recording, about lots of big things that you thought you knew about that you may find you don't really know that much. And if you open your mind, he may introduce you to some mysteries and technique or riffs or styles of playing that will be very important in your career or your undertaking or your advocation. Um, music's wonderful. It's a river. It never stops flowing. If we're lucky, we get to add to it and we get to sip from it. If we're lucky, we get to be a part of it in some way. Make yourself lucky. Listen to Rick Beto, and I'm sure you'll be glad. Thank you very much for your time. Be good. Be good to each other. That's what's really important. Be good to each other.